Hello engineers, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to develop a car following application using computer vision techniques. For this, we are going to use Prius robot model cars simulated using a ROS gazebo environment. We are going to use OpenCV based object tracking algorithms to accomplish this task. There are three main steps to this project. First being the simulation or environment setup, the second being the leading car logic, and the third being the following car logic. We will be going over these steps one by one. So let's first start with the first step. The first step to setting up the simulation environment is to get the roads on which the cars are going to drive. To develop this environment or world file, we are going to use this open source tool named road map generator. This tool allows us to build different complex and simple road environments on which the robot cars can drive. I have already cloned this road map generator and the main file that we have to run is the wizard.py. Running the wizard.py file gives us a GUI interface which we can use to develop the road world. Let's first enter the number of rows and the number of columns. We can then enter any arbitrary time as it has been asked by the wizard. In the next step, we have this grid on which we have to select how we want to model our road. Mainly two road model files have been used. The first is the straight road model and the second is the intersection road model. To model the straight road, we simply have to click once on each of these grids. The dark blue color represents the straight road model. To place the intersection road model, we have to click the selected grid box once again. The light blue color represents the intersection road model. Using this tool, we can develop arbitrarily complex road maps, but for our case, we are only going to use a straight road. Once we are satisfied with the grid that we have, on clicking the generate road map, we get a world file which we can use in our simulation. This is the world file that we received from the tool. However, to make it usable for the gazebo simulation, we have to add certain parameters to this file. Since there are a lot of models with the same name, we have to set arbitrary names for each of these road models. A simple way to do that is to insert name tags and name each road with the name road underscore road number. Since this is the first road, we have named this road one. For the second road, we are going to copy this and use the name road two. And we will keep on repeating this until we rename all the models that have been used. For our simulation, we are going to use this another road.world file which is placed in the worlds folder. To launch the simulation, we have two launch files, which are car simulation.launch and car spawn.launch. Car spawn is responsible for spawning the car model in the simulation environment. And the car simulation launch file is responsible for generating the complete simulation, the roads and the cars. First, we launch the world file. Then we spawn the following car model and then we spawn the follower car model. Now let's run this launch file. This takes some time to load. And as we can see, we have our straight road and we have two robot cars placed on that road. The second step in our project is to develop the logic for the leading car. The overall code for that goes in the lane follower.py file. The 
the complete logic for the leading car is to follow the yellow colored lanes as we saw on the sides of the road model. We are going to use OpenCV techniques to detect the yellow colored lane and follow it using a PID controller. The first step is to initialize the ROS node and subscribe to the image topic. We also start a publisher that is used to control the car. We do all our lane detection tasks in the image callback function. On receiving the image, we first trim the image based on whether the car is on the left lane or the right lane. Then we create a mask to detect the yellow color and do the bitwise and operation to get the yellow colored lanes from the image. From the image mask, we first calculate the default value or the X coordinate of where the lane is going to be. Then for each iteration of the image callback, we also receive the current X coordinate of where the lane is. Therefore, we now have the default X coordinate of where the lane should be and the current X coordinate where the lane is currently in the image. We are going to use both of these values to program our PID controller. To control the car, we are going to use the control data structure. We have to specify certain variables in this data structure to control the car. First, we need to set the gear. Since for our application, we only have the car to move forward. Hence, we are going to permanently set the forward gear command. Other than the gear, we also have to give the throttle or the acceleration, the steering command and the brake value. We will be specifying these components ahead. Then we initialize the infinite ROS loop. In this infinite loop, we use the default lane value and the current lane value to calculate the error. This error is used to compute the proportional component of the PID controller. Then we also calculate the derivative of the error and use it as the derivative component. For this controller, we have set the integral component as zero as there are no offset errors that occur in this simulation. Then we set the throttle command as 0.5 and give the steer value as the summation of proportional and derivative components. As we saw at the start, the leading car was moving in a zigzag pattern where it was changing lanes. For changing the lanes, we also have some manual driving component. Whenever the car wants to drive straight, it uses the PID controller. The car drives straight for 350 time units. Once these 350 time units have expired, then the car starts its lane change maneuver. For that, we simply give a steer command to the left or right, depending on which lane the car is currently in. And keep on giving that steer command for 60 time units. Once these 60 time units have expired, then the car goes back into the lane following state. This complete code or logic helps the leading car move as we saw. Let's run this code independently to see the leading car in action. First, let us have a look at the image processing functions of this car. So this is what the car sees in its first iteration. In the leftmost part, we are seeing the cropped image that we are receiving directly from the camera. In the right, we can see the mask that we have developed to detect the yellow color. And in the middle, we are detecting that yellow color from that complete image. Now let's run the code and see how the car moves using this image input and the manual lane changing components.
So the last component that we now have left is the following application. The logic for the following is almost similar to the lane following that we did before. First, we are going to get the bounding box coordinates of the leading car. Then we are going to use a PID controller to adjust the steering of this following car. The code is also very similar. We first initialize the subscribers and the publisher components. The image processing or retrieving the bounding box functions are once again coded in the image callback function. For the tracking application, we are using the OpenCV KCF tracker. There are a lot of trackers that are available in OpenCV that we can use. I'll put a link in the description as well, where you can read more about these trackers. We are using the KCF tracker because of its high FPS or frames per second. Once we receive the image, we get the bounding box coordinates. From the bounding box coordinates that we will receive from our image, we are going to try and follow the center of the bounding box. Our controller is going to adjust the steering in such a way that the center coordinate remains at a default position. So the first step is to get that default center value. We are over here doing this manually by giving the bounding box coordinate values. The first two are the upper left coordinates and the next two are the height and width. We can either use the select ROI function or we can set them using the default value. This initialization component is responsible for setting the default center value. Now for each of the next iteration of the image callback, we are going to update these bounding box coordinates and this value is going to act as the current center value. Hence, we now have two variables, the default center value and the current center value. Once again, we are using the control data structure to control our following car. And once again, in the infinite ROS loop, we have the logic for the PID controller. First step is to calculate the error between the default center value and the current center value. This is going to act as the proportional component. Then we calculate the derivative component of this error value. Once again, the integral component is kept as zero. The throttle or acceleration of the car is kept at a constant 0.4 value. And the steering command is calculated using the sum of the proportional and the derivative component. Now let's have a look at how this code works while in action. So these are the first few images that the following car is receiving and how it is tracking the leading car. The bounding box represents how it is seeing the leading car. Let's now also have a look at how the final simulation and code look like. So this is the final simulation. As we can see, the leading car is using the lanes to drive forward and then it will execute a lane change maneuver. The following car is using the OpenCV KCF tracker to track and follow the leading car. All right, so this is it that we had for this video. If you like the video, press the like button and subscribe to the channel for more such videos. And thank you for watching. Bye.